nerd soul lay ill kid at one youngster hold it down bring that streak geek and nerd soul like comment subscribe hit the bell let's go it's anime age time y'all that's right put your hands in the air uh that's right from side to side i'm going to wave them hands because i'm not by myself that's right i'm gonna go in and throw it to mama straw hat herself shouts out to gamma ray say what's up Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Gamma Ray Cosplay. Lawyer by day, cosplayer by night. And mother of the future straw hat of the pirate. Uh, King of the pirates. That's right. That's right. And we got both halves. All right. We got a full hole. All right. 100% of blurry up in here. I'm going to throw it to the dubious one. All right. Mark Dub, say what's up. What is up, y'all? It's Mark Dub. Part man, half amazing spicy like the Creole night occasion. Yours truly, but never truly yours. How y'all doing? Oh, boy, man. Look, it's good to hear that voice, man. You out here chilling, staying strong, you know, and I want to give a grand rising <laughs> to Brother Coop. But he didn't give me a grand rising, but it was something else. It was just it was close. But and also, would a full hole just be a whole mic? Oh man. <laughs> Fractions, y'all. Study them. But uh <laughs> math, it's your friend. Anyway, I'm Keith Cooper. This podcast will of course be at our other platforms. Our website is undergoing an undertaking. Uh, that I guess is necessary. It's necessarily not it, it happened. <laughs> but you can find us on Spotify, various platforms, uh our different direct links to our merch store. So we a little discombobulated right now, but we working to pull ourselves together back like Voltron. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, well, I'm going to throw it to uh, the Gaminator. Uh, Miss Ray, what in the world you been watching? Well, I have been surprised that there's actually been some new stuff. I've been waiting for the new stuff to drop, but there's been some little gems I've had the privilege to enjoy uh, this past week, and one of them, I'm trying to make sure I find the name, is called, um, well, what is it, what is it? It's I called, make sure I write it down, because you be putting me up on stuff. So it's called uh, Re-Monster. I'm I really liking it. that. Uh, essentially, you have this, it's, 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 it's the cat season. It's raining. Oh, it's boy. Uh-oh. Like, oh, oh, boy. But this is a very unique isekai. This, this isn't your typical salary worker or college student isekai. This is somebody who was already from a world where they have powers and crazy stuff is going on. And they get reincarnated as a little green goblin. But that person doesn't stay a green goblin forever. They... Hmm as the new trend level up quite a bit um amongst friends and become you know hobgoblin and then they're like borderline humanoid looking goblin it's pretty cool um a lot of cool scenes um you know not a lot of wasted storyline so pretty much we've been enjoying that one and then another one i found myself enjoying is i was reincarnated as the seventh the prince princes. <laughs> so I can take my time perfecting my magical ability. What? All right, All right look. <laughs> yeah, that's a real it's, name, and I can't believe that's. I when yeah. I see those names, I just run. I just run. It's a <laughs> mouthful. Oh. It's a mouthful. But it's cute. It's just, you know, another magician was actually reincarnated into the same world he died. In. Um, <laughs> Damn. But as a uh, but as a royal, and he's got this crazy obsession with just learning magic, and here he is, like you know, ten years old, and just taking on the hidden demon in the basement, and you know all these crazy strong powers, and so he's got a little. Uh, a, a little uh, dark side to him, but it's still a joyful little kid. And, um, you know, uh, there's been some other things I, I've been looking to, to watch, but, but so far, the, that's what's been uh, taking up my interest. I finished up Mash, so it kind of ended with a little filler episode, but. Uh, um, ended with a filler? They, they enjoyed like a bang finale? 
I don't agree. Can, can we discuss Bachelor? Because that's what I was going to say. Can, can we discuss that I one? I mean, everyone say it was, I feel like it, it was a filler because, I mean, all it was was just him trying to take his exams and, I mean, it, it didn't end on, on, on a bang. I think they could have I I won't disagree, but I slightly disagree. And this is why. I think the, the episode before it, like in Marvel movies, have had that what you call it promotive or how you say it episode been the big banger and other stuff oh. and this is that transition before he got to take the other part of the exams and they probably like smartly what i appreciate about Marshall, i don't know if the first season was like 20 episodes but it's like you know what stick to hit that 13 number be in say hey i love y'all peace out you don't oh he's not overstaying his welcome at all Unlike another one that uh that pains Mark and I so or I just I tapped out until I tapped back in. I ain't even gonna say the name of it. Y'all figured it out from the past episodes. But I appreciate Mark Marshall not overstaying his welcome and it's gonna come back in another season. I enjoyed the season so much that I'm cool with it. And also, you know, Marshall ain't the smartest character. I kinda like the you know, pumping him up to like, you know, you gotta use your brains, bro. Like you gotta study, like you yes, you a hero. But look at all this racism we deal with. Well, prejudice that you're dealing with because you can't use magic. Kind of like in the X-Men world. like, And I like that they showed that Lemon stood up for him and the villagers was coming to like abuse him and, and try to get off, get their rocks on him. And he declared right there in front of all you people, I'm going to defeat I'm gonna defeat all this ish with my fist. Like he always says, and he get that hype me up. I liked it. Cause that's just that's a perfect title card to lead out on a character who isn't say the brightest, but he's able to express himself enough, and he doesn't really get feared. But he was just fear that he, like I'm not that smart, and he actually was scared of studying more than fighting a monster. So it's like he has a weakness, but it's like that was a good way to reassure him. That's just how I took out of it. Like I, I liked it. I was cool with the ending. Hmm, okay, okay, all right, so Masho, all right, then, um, um, at least some of y'all got some some closure, a, a little bit of happiness, because we know that that you two out there, we ain't even going to talk about that. But uh, So, so Masho's, his Lex Luthor, his Joker, is studying? Education. <laughs> yes. Yo, you gotta... That's the one thing he can't... Shaking my head. That's the one thing he can't do and, greatly. And, 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 one thing he can't fight. <laughs> it's like you know how in Naruto, when Naruto be like, "I'm stupid, but I'm gonna just bust it through that." It's more. This is like, dang man, I can't do this. It's like, and he like he'll start. I love how they the character voice act where he'll just be like making like he's nervous. He'll make that noise like, no, 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 no. And it's just funny because he's deadpan all the way through. Like Master's voice never raises, so that's kind of like he's kind of like One Punch Man in that way. Well, One Punch Man will get really pissed or something. You'll do it, and they'll make the jokes. Masha is even more even kill. So he'll show expression, but his eyes don't... He don't really get... Ex show anger, mad, or whatever. But that's the only expression he'll show is, like, silliness or nervousness a little bit when he had to do something that's educational. But it, it's a good... I, I love it, man. man look, y'all gotta get out there getting them books, y'all. Don't be afraid of them books. Yeah, man. All right, we don't all learn at the same level at the same speed, but that don't mean you, you can't learn. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't be, be afraid. A, a fool, a a, ha a whole half. <laughs> anyway, back to Rach. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I still, I still want it more. I still feel like we could have ended with at least if we weren't going to have a lot of fighting, it could have ended with a twist that would have held us over to get excited. Like, oh my gosh, what is? What's to come? Um, that was the only thing I kind of I kind of missed from that. Um, I haven't. There's there's like two things I want to watch that actually literally just popped up um, mm -hmm. as we were on here. Um, I definitely look forward to checking out. Um, uh, it's called Windbreaker. Uh, I saw the trailer. Um, it seems like we're gonna get something very similar to like Jujutsu Kaisen and the Kamui, uh in the sense of like. From the from the gate, we gonna get you know 
some good action. I mean, hold on, hold on. Let me look, let me look this up. Windbreaker? Cause see, all yeah. I remember about Windbreaker was like when I was in middle school, there was these little jumpsuits, right? And they sounded mad <laughs> slickety. Hey, right. old buddy's hair will remind you of the classic black and white windbreaker. Uh, cause it is black and white. But apparently he's in a town where, you know, it's all about brawling. Um, but he uh um essentially tries to 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 make his way um to the top with his fist. So can I and, ask a question? Does it like me and you had a weird affinity for Bucci Gary? I can't do it every week. Does it look like it'll be better than Bucci Gary? That's how I think so. Okay. I think it's not gonna have the not the, the magical. comedic magical okay. overtone. You know, I think we'll get the more of like what those serious fights we get. With okay. Bucci. Then I'm. Like, on, I think that's what we'll get. Then I'll mark myself down to try out at least one episode of Windbreaker. I know next week I'm gonna kind of really go through my list. Uh, I mean, I already mentioned two more. I'm gonna add, so I'll just add that. That'll probably be my three right there in addition to the return of big stuff but i was curious about it i've seen shorts of windbreaker before like due to the youtube scroll of some of the characters so and is it korea based uh like, or... i think it's japanese okay japanese okay and, uh, okay all right also last and then high school doing his thing okay okay That's all right oh, we'll see we'll see it look like he go to east side high so always, right. <laughs> man. They always, they always go to Asian East Side High, man. Come on now. What it would be, it would work if it were the trashy school where everybody tried to kill you, including the principal, probably. Where the public funding go for these places, man? man in the, yeah, to- in the toilet, the toilet. <laughs> they need, they need somebody singing. There is side. Uh... Oh, these schools, they'll get up. You try to do that, they'll get up and kick you in the head. <laughs> Oh, and last but not least, I'm very much excited about another slice of life romance because I'm definitely needing something now that A Sign of Affection is uh, just... completed their first season. Oh. I wait for they come back. Oh. I'm looking forward to watching a condition called Love. Ooh. Um, essentially, uh, from what I gathered in the previews and clips, this high school boy is falling in love at first sight and he is determined to make this girl next door at school who's just like I'm not interested in you like <laughs> you know I'm going I want you to fall for me but he's not you know trying to be all Rico Suave with it you know um no splock of belly or nothing he just mm. <laughs> just going to you know be his warm puppy dog self and and just trying to you know win her love Yo, man, all he got to do is call. It's already, they're already using the word condition. All you got to do is play some mint condition. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's all you got to do. You got to say pretty brown eyes. It's, well, I mean, it looked like she got purple eyes, but you know what I'm saying? He can, he can admit that. He can fix that. <laughs> Mike, I just want to say thank you for upgrading to a more safe and friendly song. Continue. Bruh, I've referenced all kinds I, of songs uh, from all <laughs> kinds of eras, from hip hop to rap to jazz. Like, no, come on, we, now. Don't, don't try to don't, single me down we, to one change in faces song. Bruh, I have referenced many a song. I'm just saying, on the Blurs podcast, we appreciate you, bro. That's all I'm saying. Don't tell your friends that I don't mean nothing to <laughs> you. <laughs> That's right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Please don't deny the truth. When you listen right, to those songs, you feel like you need to get you a Bring white linen suit. You need a white linen suit and you just need to sway. And you gotta walk <laughs> barefoot on the beach. Yeah, I ain't wanna say or in the rain. Feet, but it makes you gotta have you oh, gotta be in no. the rain. That's hey, you, you gotta be clutching up. your fist real tight if you're walking in the rain. So you oh yeah, you gotta clutch like your you fist mean. real tight and like look up in the sky like just like in a reflective way. You're and searching for the answers. And You're looking in winter, the sky at the rain. If it's winter time, you must have a Carl Thomas uh, curl and sweater. Yo, Carl Thomas did. It was kind of like almost a Jerry curl, but it wasn't because it, it was short. <laughs> but it wasn't like it was like it was some it was product. A skirt. Yeah, he had like a baby skirl, like a, a, a S curl. Real talk. Side note. 
because this is the only way y'all gonna get this question on these pods while we do anime. Will the will the curl ever come back? Like for for like not natural, not you natural curly people. You know, generally you like. Oh, you mean the, you mean the Jerry not. curl? Will will the Absolutely curl Thomas come back? The activator. You know what? No, curl Thomas. I mean, because that's that folk, that's risking folks messing up their clothes and like. Yeah, uh-uh. it's gonna be. Gabba has spoke for the ladies. Don't do it, brothers. She said, "Don't no, do it." No, no. Are you gonna mess up <laughs> the clothes? Are you gonna mess up? So, I mean, so no Billy Ocean. Gotta worry about grease stains. Lastly, don't sleep act- though. Women be trying to be trying to like fake s curl with the wet and wavy though. Like they be trying to like it's like a a semi Jerry <laughs> curl with that I, wet I and wavy. I can't do the Billy Ocean. <laughs> Caribbean queen. Now we're sharing the same dream. Classics right now. That was a joint. Don't want to stop. I say Caribbean, but I don't know, man. That's just me. But (laughs) I'll say this, man. I'm going to say this. Carl Thomas is the man, but Carl Thomas was also wrong. Because this dude, (laughs) this dude was literally trying to get a woman to break up with her husband. He said, for the children. And then he said, but what about me? What you mean about you, selfish? <laughs> Kim <laughs> and Dave Hollister had the most, the best sounding problematic songs ever. And it's not even I was, close. I was like, <laughs> like uh, what you mean? What about you? Bro, what about you? Play with more. kids. What? She got to stay home. But what about me? <laughs> you know who was really, who was really offensive Hollister. back in there? He, he sang it so well I, for years I didn't check the words I was just singing along <laughs> it's so terrible it's like, like long gone are the days when I ran the streets trying to get laid that man but he is, said but he changed though he a new man it's you just the he, way he, you he having that conversation so with somebody <laughs> it's so it's like Yo, <laughs> but all of them they don't compare to LL LL is always scheming on your girl in every song like I got love for LL, but Lick they Lipper. do be scheming on your girl and Lip, every Lip song. Licker. LL Jay. ain't met a woman he couldn't take from somebody else. Bro, every, every song. Right. Watch and the music video. He be scheming love. on your girl every song. And Ooh, Chris yeah. Brown. Chris Brown is the evil mutated version of that. <laughs> and I'm going to just say that. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> but, oh, boy. Shouts, man, shouts, you know, I'm from VA, so shout, shouts to Chris Brown, man. Look, Chris Brown, yeah. look, I yeah. miss happy Chris Brown. I'm going to just say that. I know no one else has said that. I miss happy Chris Brown. Well, shout right, out to Nappy know, Beard. He's a big, if he's listening, I know he's a big fan of Chris Brown uh, when he talk about I just streets. want you to go back to being smiling and stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's never going to happen again. Like, I remember when old. you used to be smiling, remember, and you was dancing. He ain't got nothing to smile about no more. It was you and Lil Wayne, and you was in the bank, and you was dancing. And you were smiling. I remember that. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Like, go back to them happy days. Never. That's all I'm saying. Never. That's a he old. Watch. That brother started getting meaner and meaner the more the more tattoos he got. Like, just... or when he started losing his mind. <laughs> <It's just> like... <laughs> anyway, anyway right. back together. I was gonna say it was the, probably the hard drugs, but you know. Yeah. Well, you know, there's there's reasons that make that... you lose your mind. <laughs> <laughs> but I, Gabriel, you got anything else? Anything else you've been watching? Uh, no. Other than I finally I've caught up on um, Invincible. I can't believe I have been sleeping on season two. Uh, binged it all in like two days. Okay, uh, okay. Didn't realize how much. Forgot how much I loved the show and yeah. just the crazy just. As world it, that that it has has uh, brought us of just superheroes and not your typical superheroes, but um, I, I mean, yeah, it, love it. It's 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 good. Um, I hadn't had a chance to watch the most recent episode, but I am again and forever will be a fan of this. I am, and I think I remember seeing them talk about this. I am mad they made Amber a little bit more light skinned when she was in season one. They could have left them chocolate. But you know what? That's, that's, that's a discussion for another day. But y'all know how hey, to man. Got it. She Yo, did look a little Momoka. A little, just a smidge Momoka, maybe. She was nice and and, and chocolatey season they, one. They now lost we the get the crayon pack. Yeah. They, they, they didn't get it. Didn't have it in production or something. It was just like, ah, oh, just go. They ain't gonna know. 
they ain't gonna notice. Nah, we gonna notice. No, I very much immediately noticed. I was like, what? Yeah, now she mentioned it. She does. She did. You know, go from a deep brown to mocha, a little bit of mocha. I mean, at least it's not as bad as like Fresh Prince, where like <laughs> they close one season, <laughs> they come back. You like, yo, who this? The light skin obvious. <laughs> Man, oh, let's just be honest. They'll be like, oh, here's a new kid. They say that kid grown, or they say that kid disappeared. Yo, that kid TV went from make- baby to like seven years old man to vanish to vanish it <laughs> oh well i don't know what you're talking about what kid all right so all right so with invincible you haven't seen the the newest episode right gamma or have you correct no i haven't right, seen cool, episode eight I, yet. i'll hold off on invincible we'll talk about that because i know you you're gonna be leaving soon so we'll talk about that after you bounce well you know what i'm saying all right um have you seen are you caught up on x-men uh oh my gosh, I keep forgetting that comes out on Wednesdays. See, mm. I'm gonna have mm. to change. Mm. See, my like binge days are like Sundays. Ah, uh, which makes right. me prepare for Monday, but I completely forgot to re binge for for the Thursday today. But yeah, I feel you, I feel you. Um, all right, we, we, well, we I won't I hold. Want to talk about X Men? Well, I ain't tell you what, X-Men. did you watch the 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 season of Solo Leveling? I did, and yeah. I am here for it. I, I I wanted to do a standing ovation for when my man demanded the to bend the knee, as they say on on a uh, Game of Thrones. Man. So you, you watched bent it, Mark? The knee. <laughs> you watched so, it, uh, so I'm here for it. Man, look. When nah, I was, hold when... up. I, I, before we get started with that, I want to say how angry I am because angry. I thought we was getting 13 episodes. And we got twelve, and well, I was like, I was like, hold up, I thought we got one more in the tank. My bad, that's my probably my fault because I think I said thirteen, but it turned out to be twelve. Well, I thought we, we did, get thirteen. We got thirteen episodes, but one was that recap filler, so it technically didn't count. Oh wait, wait. Man, so that's probably I, where, yeah, we man. got thirteen episodes, but only like twelve actual like storyline episodes. But yeah, and I guess on, how you feeling about that solo level again, Because we we could talk about that. We could talk about that. Yeah, I, I'm feeling that. I I feel like this was a perfect pace and place to end it on. It wasn't anything over the top. It wasn't something too far fetched. I feel like he he leveled up to the place he needed to. Uh, Kind of like learning from his mistakes, uh, because yes. he was getting that tail whooped, and he and luckily he got a penalty that allowed him to do a little re up, um, and, and he life. came back mm-hmm. better than ever, and he was able to uh, come to Necromancer, and and he was like, I just finished whooping all y'all tail, now now y'all bow down, and y'all work for me, yeah, and he was like, I'm gonna try to get. The red knight. He's like, I'm gonna try to get you. You you gonna the the knight who defended an empty throne, I'm about to sit on the throne and you defend me. Igris was he the did. truth. That fight there. I Man, everything about Igris, he came look, he pop out uh, he materialized. He's like, I've been here the whole time, Playboy. He just walked out behind the column. And then he put the that's why well, even though Igris is a monster determined to kill people blah 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 he had honor with it he was like oh you gonna fight with your hands i got you i'm gonna serve oh, you I, I love that, that part i'm gonna okay. serve you I- up I- Igris say, oh, mm-hmm. oh i ain't gonna do it with, the, with no weapons Hold he up, turned his head to the side down. like show you something bruh, he took the cape off bruh it was it was <laughs> <flames>. <laughs> he took the cape off he said oh i got you are oh, you gonna earn yeah. this i also oh, appreciate you ain't lied that. on that one of his toughest battles wasn't just a physical one, but a mental one Both. with himself. Yes. His whole self. Like, mm-hmm. he's just like, why are you trying so hard? Like, you never tried to care before. Just, you did enough. Like, hey, you check the box. It's over with. And, you know, if it was any other, you know, if it was the old him, he would have. He'd been like, nah, this ain't for me. But he was like, nah, I don't work too hard. I'm leveling up. I got a taste of it. I can't, I can't turn back. I won't and even. I gotta, say, that. I gotta say, my mama, man, gotta get that elixir. I, I, I feel like I don't even knock his old self because his old self 
was never a coward. He just was weak. But I guess, you know, when you get your, your brains kicked in, the doubt start to, and the fear start to come in because he almost died. Yeah, because <laughs> like, was, man, you have done enough. Was, Chill out. Like, go to sleep. Like, nah, Thank you got to... You gotta tell that voice or that uh, dissenting spirit not to get all spiritual. Just take a step back. I'm gonna overcome this, and we all had to do that for ourselves if we got a certain place. You know, whether it's school, job, you know, maybe trying to impress somebody or just trying to build yourself up. Rise above it. You know. Uh So it's uh, Jin Woo is the dog, man. I, I love Jin. Man, like, I, yo, this show, the way it ended, with him being, where he came to, he was like, look, I'm the captain now. You gonna serve me, so rise. Man, look, I was like, look, yo, this, yo, hey, y'all gonna try to, y'all gonna try to make this dude hit the top 10 and maybe sneak it to that top five. Like, y'all trying hard. Unless y'all make him do oh, some yeah, dumb like- stuff. He he might be trying to squeak into that top five. I'm gonna his just tell pop, you like his this. power set just 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 boosted like ridiculously. Like oh, yeah, it, that's a but man. he got to work for it too. That's the thing I like. You got to you know I want to see my heroes working for it. It's hey, not, he got, got to work for it. Same his, yeah, I appreciate it. Chris the blood dread was uh, his his mental. He is a dog and a half. He got to use his mind. He had to figure it out. Like oh, I can't just fight because I love what the dungeon. I love whoever's writing this. I love the setup. It was like the dungeon, like, all right, we know you strong. Here's your job requesting. Oh, by the way, you can't heal yourself in this dungeon. Figure it out. And it's like, he like, oh, the mages are going. If I don't kill the mages, I can't turn stealth. What do I do? The mages are calling me out. Then he had time to think. He got lucky. He got lucky against Igris. Igris. He got lucky in that other, the second half of it. So sometimes luck does play a fact into it, but what the dungeon, maybe whether if it was being a little bit nice, I mean, he was trying to kill him, but it's like, use all your skills, put your skills together. Okay, you can't use your dagger, here's an enemy, you can't use your dagger on, until you get the proper tools. What other tools do you have in your toolbox, toolbox to overcome this problem? And he had to figure that out through every central, uh, single situation. Whereas, and now we're going to be walking into a season two where he's got a ar- well, maybe not an army, maybe like I consider I that maybe like a he has maybe army. like a like a squad. No, probably I bigger than a squad, like maybe a like squad. a brigade. Yeah. Well, I just love the fact that where he's at right now, his uh level, he's definitely Bruh, uh, that telekinesis that. is going to come in handy. He it does, yeah. it does. He's like anywhere now between an A and an S right now. So he's, Bruh, he's with the whole, and, with and the, I like with the, the army the behind subtle, him. It's gonna be trouble. And I like the subtle, you know, B story in the background of like with this island. Like mm-hmm. they've been dropping hints about it like mm-hmm. all season. Right. We saw a little bit, a little bit of it in the first episode, but obviously there's more to it. There's there's some history between I, that and the Guildmaster. So I um, can, I cannot wait to season two to see it. Yeah, I wonder how they're gonna play that out if. Uh, if we're gonna get kind of cut away from Jim Wu's life to go to Jeju Island, or if he's gonna somehow get swept up in it and have to end up going there himself, um, because I definitely want to see what goes on on Gilligan's Island. You know, I want to see what happens. This. I'm not gonna lie, I read it. As good as this season is, it's gonna be just as good, if not better, for the next one. That's all I got. That's it's gonna be just as good. It's gonna be great. They're gonna, they're gonna spoil a man right there. I ain't you know spoiled that. All I said is just it's gonna be just as good or better. I, I put full faith in that comment. I take that. That that that's as close as we gonna come to no spoilers from that's, spoiler sign. Hey, <laughs> shut up. Anyway, I don't know. Man. It's all I got. This all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna behave. No, man. you shut so up. We got we got <laughs> Jake Island. We got Gabby Martyrs Island. We got you know we got Gilligan's Island. We got a couple islands out there. You know so. Man, we, ready for it. we don't know when Gabby's Island coming. Out. Gabby, Marie. we don't know what what Mappa Mappa's oh. doing their own original thing right now. Especially since, especially since they said their whole season was like two days or something. At the end. I was like, hold on, what? Yeah, it's just oh, three no. days. Speaking speaking of that, all right, I'm catching up. Again, this is random, island. but <laughs> I'm catching up on my hero because my hero getting ready to come back, right? 
So I want to talk about anime anime time for just or TV time in general for just a second. So my hero, it's season six. I and they they're fighting against the the uh, the the paranormal front or the just they they against the bad guys. It's the war against the bad guys, right? And basically, one of these kids, because uh, it's when um when uh Gigantor or whatever comes through and they gotta like throw the sleeping pills in his mouth, and Shorty is like. We've been in school for one year. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'm a hold on, hold on, hold on. Six seasons is one year. Mike, we had this discussion already, bro. If TV, we had, we had this discussion. It's crazy when you hear stuff. But if you think of it this way, six seasons, though. One day they can make like I don't know three, four, five episodes out of one day sometimes. So if you think of a year's time. Well, they done did like back to back invasions of the school, this and that. Things been towed up. Society has plummeted down to a new level. This has happened in their freshman year. Right. She said something like, it's been a year since we've started at UA or something like that. And I was like, hold on, what? Yeah, I had bro. to pause it. I was like, hold on, hold on. I had to pause it, press the back button to make sure I knew what season I was in. <laughs> I was like, yes, this is season numero six. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, about that's... we about to start season siete, all right? Come on, man! You and know... they talk about one year, bruh. <laughs> Come on, y'all how, 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 how long was back to back to say the bell kid say by the bell kids was in high school? At least seven. It, it was a, it was a high school for like twelve <laughs> seasons. <laughs> so, and they don't have, and they were based on just no one date. Man, that joint. Like, I, I I was just like, yo, TV time. That y'all was be that tripping. TV man. Man, that TV time. They do whatever they want. Just yes. like when I was uh, talking about, um, like in these shows where someone like goes on their lunch break and they meet up with like their significant other and they, you know, have this passionate time. And I'm like, uh, so when y'all going back to work? Cause, like, I remember when I was working at an office. Like, you can barely get. To like Chipotle and back within, within an hour. Within y'all done an hour. Home. Y'all done got undressed and all kind. Of, like, oh, what, what time is it? Look, they having passionate love making sessions. I can barely eat and use the bathroom within an hour, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> man, bro, you be rushing to get to like Chipotle and back, and you be like, oh man, I got ten minutes left. Well, I guess I gotta hurry up and eat this. But, and I'm like, what? What time is it? Sometimes but don't I nobody be, ever get in trouble. Don't nobody ever get called out for being late. They, they, well, they just do whatever they want. They be the best people at their office, and you know they can't make the sales without those two somehow. Even though they don't never work, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. Oh man! All right. Well, um, since since Gamma Ray went on and dip, I'm gonna throw it to you, Coop. Uh, Mister Koopa Koopa, what you been watching? We didn't talk about Mashal. Shout out to Gamma for joining me on that. Uh, I loved it. Um, I have, let's see. Uh, I still got to watch the end of my slice of life for the season. Um, I have solo leveling again. Phenomenal chef's kiss. You know, terrible theme song. Terrible theme song. Me and Mark mm, agree. We that all theme agree. song need help. Terrible theme song with the drums. You know, I I like the ending. Like the ending should have been the opener. I don't know what they was doing with that opener. <clears throat> they could they could trash that for next season. I need the I need the Juju Island arc to be way <laughs> get some fire. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that, that music so, ain't, it ain't hit. So what else? I'm going to randomly uh, I'm gonna veer off course a little bit. I'm gonna do my full preview for next week, but I gotta say shout out to the Black Monster Dunday if that's what I'm saying it right. Since I know viral hit is becoming, yo, it's it's one that has it's got a hold on me. I've been watching his videos, so the anime haven't started yet. But y'all, just like we just talked about with solo leveling, I don't know what's going on with Korea and everybody's mom is not well and in the hospital, and everybody's poor who's like the main kid. But y'all, I'm gonna just admit this: I'm a sucker, y'all, for it. I love poor uh, underdog fighting to come up in this world because some folks will actually root harder for the rich dude who already made it and they talking about he's self-made. BS. 
I didn't heard that. We didn't heard that argument in the barbershop. We didn't heard people talk about that with certain anime characters. <coughs> Bakugo. But uh, who got who got all the advantages? And they start at the top. And you know, people will kick the little guy down and say he don't deserve it for wanting to actually be something, which is amazing to me. Bruh, viral hit. It's something us as creators. This show is going. This show is touching all the nerves, or this show will touch the nerves. Hopefully, the animation, the trailer. I know it might throw people off how it's cut. I kind of like. It's going to be a little funny bits to it, but it's going to be very. Um, it's going to get dark because Korea. I don't know, but they know how to do it in their shows. They know it's how to do be it. Brutal. They, it's going to be brutal, and it's going to be like, oh, I'm such and such, and then you gonna have to get get with it real quick. I've got to the part of the story. Well, you know, like, let's say Ghost and Goblins. Remember how hard that game was? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, it yeah, took you definitely. everything to get through the first level. But when you get to that blue level or to that uh, other stage, you're losing. You're like, I'm, I'm trying not to curse, but you're losing your mind. <laughs> your mind is being bit into. Yeah. It's like, oh, Lord, what do we do? But, bro, I, I, I respect. It's real motivation. It's like, I'm the... My mom is sick. She need a transplant. I work at <laughs> Lack Donald Lot Lot Donalds. They can't say McDonald's. They ain't have a license, so they just made up one. <laughs> he, works at Mc he works at McDowell's. You know he's, what I'm saying? He's at the bottom rung, and an accident of getting going viral on YouTube by accident on live stream by another loser who was kind of a little bit up the social ladder bullying him, and it turned out that that was the best thing that happened to him to kind of change his life in a different uh trajectory if you will so i'm gonna go more into it next week um but i i really am suggesting viral hit already um to go with some of the new ones that we're gonna get into of course like loser ranger or whatever and other stuff but we'll go more into that we'll talk about that more but uh as far as watching i it's time ninja comedy time for me uh i'm gonna say this first of all I have started to come across people on the same post or same back to back that hate on X Men ninety seven and hate on Ninja Cowboy and saying the story is trash. The voice, then the, here come the weaves. Be like the dub is terrible. It's in America. I don't care. First of all, I, I hope that the character, who's, the dude who's doing Mike, is black. He feel black. He's doing, if he ain't black, he's doing a good job. How dare you hate on Uncle Mike and any of his ramblings? His ramblings Except are bro, Uncle, Uncle Mike went full <laughs> Uncle mode. And was, sure it was did. singing like Barry White on this one. This was yep. somewhat... If you, I don't like to use the word filler because there's no such thing as filler with this because it's not an adaptation. But if you want to put the word filler to it, kind of a dirty word for me. It still progressed things. And the characters themselves... Keegan ain't got no personality somewhat. He's, he's, he's all vengeance. That's cool. Because he going to kill people. He going to tear people up when they need to be tore up. This is our good break kind of episode. Because, I mean, you just saw Hegan roll Little's head. That's his, his, his actual name is Little. I looked at the character screen. And roll we actually of, did get some action in this episode. We sure did. We just and, didn't get a, res, a resolution to the whole, you know, we only got round one between Fade and Hagan. First of right. all, Fade... Is an honorable fighter. He was like, oh, yeah. I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna kill you at your lowest. I'm gonna show you. He said, I want I'm an elegant fight. fight. I'm an elegant fight. I'm like, all right, you know what, bro? I'm happy you survived. Hey, man, Faye talked that talk. Faye was talking mm. that, that good stuff. I'm like, all right, Faye. I'm gonna hate to see it when you die, bro, because you gotta die. But you, you well, I'm, hope, I'm hoping he don't die. I hope, I'm hoping like oh, he, no, no, he no, don't no. want to make it out because you know no, he no, got no, a fade, no, no. man. So I mean, that fade like, getting, I'm still root for the brother. Mike, that fade getting chopped. The only brother that's gonna survive is gonna be Mike, <laughs> and we hope yeah. so. But fade has got to go. But fade say, if I'm gonna do it, you are gonna do me with honor. I'm gonna do you with honor. So I can't wait to see he coming back next episode. So he's like the main thing because we all had enough a little, little just rolled. Yeah, little was so. He he got rolled out inconsequential and I loved it. I mean he got he got what he wanted. What I say, that dude loved violence, and you know the things he said. So he was happy with his death. I mean, didn't he die with a smile on his face? So mm -hmm. goodbye to him. Shout out to Emma and Emma actually respect Mike. She's like, you know, Mike, I'm sorry I played you like that, blah blah. 
Spike like, I ain't worried that you're a ninja and you're a triple double agent. You just said let me have you back. You know, you, know, we, you know, we family. You know what I'm saying? We supposed to be down. We supposed to be crew. Spike hit that drink. The drink's like, let me get up here, girl. Uh, he was like, shit. and a woo woo woo, and a woo woo woo. Yeah, if I'm sorry, if y'all can't enjoy Mike right now, people people think. just didn't like the episode. He I can see people hating on this show because they got a brother, they got a brother in there doing his thing. People be using that. Oh, I don't like the the voice act. Look, bro, it's a show that come on late at night sometimes. I'll fall asleep and wake up three in the morning. I'm watching Ninja Comedy. I'll, I'll be struggling. I'll watch it and I wake up Sunday morning. I watch it again because it's a it fits. It's like look for you young adult swimmers out there. Look when we was in the, when I was in my twenties in the early two thousands with the nine nine two thousands. This show feels just right at home. You can yeah. just listen to it. You and ain't got to turn your brain wrong. on. There's nothing wrong with the voice acting. It's people need people need a reason to feel superior to others, so they always go after the voice acting. Like they like they either they're a voice actor or or a VO di- director. Bruh. Like these people, man, Hegan don't. don't even say nothing. Hegan just they just animate Hegan looking pissed off. That's all <laughs> I. Like, he's like, all right, I'm cool. He's like, I'm gonna listen to the story. Hey, point me at the next my next target. Get my target ready. And he got in the fight. He did his thing. And he gonna be talking a lot when he be fighting anyway. I mean, depending on his levels of anger. But right now he ain't doing no talking until he probably meet the people that need he need to talk to. So, and all the all the villains do all the talking anyway. So there you have it. Kind of like it a uh, punch out or something. You know, yeah, little Mac the, didn't really say nothing. The but. the voice acting is on point. Like there, people people don't have nothing else to complain about. Because like, there's so much good stuff out, so like they have to like go out of their way. Because there's no reason with like a million animes out right now, like right. 265,000 channels that they can't find something they like. Right. What it I is don't. Is people see people enjoying something and they can't help themselves to try to like bring misery to them. I laugh about Isekai trash, and Isekai has so much of it. It's like a running joke. But when how I don't go out my way to trash Isekai because some of them I might like. Like, you know, I tried the healing, wrong way healing. Our, our our lovely friend Gamma, she talks about a lot of isekai. And I we know it's be cat. You know. Well that's not even isekai, it's just comedy. It's just, it's just weird. It's just weird. You know, it's just weird slice of life, and that's fine. I like me some weird slice of life. But it's like if I don't like it, generally I don't talk about it. Like y'all, funny thing. Shocking. Keith Cooper Blurdish is not a uh, Star Wars fan. I don't hate it. I just don't care. I'm proud to say it. I tell other friends this net. Like more power to you. I'll try it if something come across me. Like I still need to try uh, Andor because it got such good reviews. It sound like my type of jam. But I know what happens in Star Wars because everybody won't shut up crying about it. And I read and I read. <laughs> so and I'm and I'm satisfied. But you know maybe everybody ain't gonna jump in where I like. Maybe I might want to get into some like a uh, Gundam. Everybody ain't gonna have to jump into that. That might be my space opera. Okay? So people be tripping. Like, I saw that. I'm glad it's generally well liked, I think, with a certain I think us older heads like it more enough and it speaks to us. And this is why I said we're probably only gonna get one season of it. I just feel like it's still a one season, but you know what? I don't care. And if y'all don't like it. I just had to address that, but I like I see I read some comments sometimes, and that's not at us, but it's just like who are these weird weebs that be like oh, that be trying to deter people? Like I don't even try to deter people from what you you can like some complete dog garbage crap. Okay, you Charles, like it? Well, Charles, him. Let's not even bring him up on our podcast. Oh boy! But Sucker. anyway, you know of a, a guy on a more famous pod, but uh, <laughs> that I am a fan of. You know, shout out to Van. But uh, you know, that ain't my MO to be like, oh, you are you're blah blah blah, you're a little you know, calling people <laughs> a little picky who like slop. You know, it's just kind of funny to me, but it's like it's, it's garbage. It's like, you know, I punched like that dude in the nose. Anyway. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I well but <laughs> yeah, you have part. But did you kind of we dope, it's simple. This was kind of like a build up. 
they already showed a preview of what's gonna happen. It ain't really no spoilers. It's gonna be more violence. I mean, I don't even know how to. There's no way to spoil Ninja Kamui. It's just gonna be ish happening. Yeah, and like, Mike is gonna be shooting people. So there you have it. It's gonna be a <laughs> showdown. But that's pretty much every episode. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I mean, it's like watching if you grew up with westerns, if you grew up with the old kung fu movies, the old samurai movies, or Charles Bronson, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, some idiots was like, oh, it's like a, a ripoff of John Wick. Who do you think John Wick did it from? Yeah, like, Game? John Wick is what? not the f- John Wick is not the first revenge film. I saw that. I'm like, bruh, ain't y'all heard of Westerns? <laughs> like, they've been doing this since man started filming. Ever since men started to, men and women started to film something that made some sense and they could put a story to it. Guess yeah, what's like, a good- I mean, John Wick might be unique in the way they did it. But John Wick is not new in a revenge film genre. Bruh, Jet Li didn't track people. D- How many times Jet Li and Bruce Lee didn't track people down in their films? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and beat them and end them. I was just like, it's a John Wick ripoff. I'm like, oh, bruh. I'm just like, this is why. Yeah, it is. This is why, right here, society. Well, I mean, people pick their faves, and once they pick their faves, everything is a ripoff of that. Just, even though even when you can factually pull out like direct links to their favorite thing to things older than that and then they just immediately disregard be it honest, because it's their fave it has nothing to do with john wick other than nah. a revenge plot yeah it's, it's, it, it's cyber it, john wick ain't cyberpunk john wick ain't a ninja i mean i guess you can jump out of buildings uh you know we ain't dealing with russians directly right now they didn't have a utopian society uh, city. They had a hotel, but you know, it still got some uh, you know stuff going on. Alza got big plans, as you can see. Shout out, first of all, shout out to Alza for being an annoying villain. Like I said, bruh, that dude there, he ain't got to be no ninja. And also, he got—I mean, he building the ninja box. That dude jumped on the table and be like, "Oh, let, oops, Daisy, let me get up here and talk to you." I, I don't trust nobody that got to get up on the table like that. I don't trust no white dude that got to wear a white t-shirt and look like an evil job, uh, Steve Jobs at all times. Like, why? what's up with your wardrobe, dog? Like, uh, I'm going to put on this like little casual V-neck t-shirt let you know how chilled I am. But he's yeah. like, you're still going to sign these papers. <laughs> you go to sign these papers, bro. He was like... He ain't Steve Jobs. He's Steph in employment. <laughs> and he's something. He's like, he, was, he was like, I already have all these signatures. I'm like, yeah, because you he, paid for them joints. Or he blackmailed them and threatened them with an inch of their life with a old boy on the side of them. True, I mean, true. Either way, they took the money. They took the check because they was either, I'm going to take this check or I'm going to take your head. You know, because he got ninjas on his side. I don't mm-hmm. know why there ain't no other rival ninja clan. Somebody done thought of this, but I guess they are the ninjas. Maybe that's it or something. But I guess we're not going to. But you know what? Asking two deeper questions in Ninja Kamui is probably a ill effort because it's just like, hey, these are the ninjas. They get contracted out. Hamaji, Matt, or whatever his name is, Master Hamaji, right? Yeah, uh, uh, Yamaji, yeah. It was either greedy, selfish, or he thought he had some grand vision. I still need to see who's going, if he going to double cross Alza, or maybe they just locked up. Like, look. He got the money, he got the tech. Time for me to prove that we are bigger than what we are just for Japan. He's like, Japan going down, I don't like it. I want to get a bigger piece of the pie. And, you know, they were like, bring in these Americans. You know, even though we laughed at Little being a ninja, I guess he was a part of the organization. You know, he should have learned from, uh, what's his name, a little bit more, brother with the fade. We shall see, though. I just can't wait to see how this all come together. I think episode eight, I believe, is going to give us a lot more action from the jump. Uh, I still need to see Mike go to his ex-FBI agent uh, boss and either beat the hell out of him or shoot him in the head. But, like, you're going to try to burn me? I'm going to show you a burn notice, partner, right in the head. man, that was dirty. (laughs) Like, Dad, you can't just let Mike just be. Like, they already got out. Like, come on, bro. He'll he'll handle him later. Yeah, he gonna have to. He, I got. I mean, they may not do it because I know Mike ain't the star 
But if y'all put in y'all epilogue, if 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 there's an epilogue coming of him, says who? Mike is the star. <laughs> oh well. Yo, he's, Mike he's is the our, star. He's our star. Mike yeah. was on the Mike was on the stage cutting up. He was like swole Barry White. Bruh, <laughs> I we need to make a gift. Can't of that. get enough for your love, babe. Shout out to the Ninja Comedy <laughs> with gifts, but that needs to be added to the gift list. Yeah. It's like, oh. It, it is. It's in there. It's in it, there. Oh, it's in there now? Oh, yeah. Word. It ain't take long. We need that one to last forever. I'm going to record it because I am happy to see a middle aged, real black man in anime cutting up. Just chilling, man. Mike got to be. Where's Mike? Where you think Mike from? Wait. Like, I know they don't have the hmm. city listed. Mike feel like he from the south almost. He almost feel like yeah, he, he do south. feel I, like he from because he doesn't Mike feel like, like he one from of them dudes. Mississippi, dude. Arkansas, I feel somewhere. Texas. I feel Texas to to mid maybe a little bit of the Midwest, Texas, something. Yeah, maybe Midwest, but I wouldn't I wouldn't put him in like the Northeast though. Mm-hmm. He he's mm-hmm. definitely not he's definitely not I like feel, like you know Philly, New York. Nah, nah, nah. No, he like he Chicago. Didn't. He like St. Louis or something. Yeah, maybe Chicago because there's a whole bunch of country people in Chicago due to I mean, the Great Migration, which is due to just that's a whole other thing. But it. look it up, folks. They are like we in Louisiana; those are our cousins who came before us and who be trying to act like brand new. <laughs> yeah, because when I went when I went up to Chicago, I heard a lot of uh, accents that sounded like they was from down here and i was like yeah. what and then a older look wherever you travel find yourself an old black man he'll break down the city to you he broke it down he was like the reason all of us sound like this is because all of us are from you know alabama mississippi texas stuff like that because due to the great migration they was like look let's go yeah. what do y'all think look why are we having this lesson the blues that they created down here, Muddy Waters, uh, uh, some other names. If y'all ever watch, I know Chess Records is the watered down version. But if you look at those characters, where they came from, where they took it, Chicago. That's why Chicago blues came from here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we brought it up there and it made it worldwide. So, great migration, y'all. Good one, Mike. That's 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 the truth. And agent mike or former agent mike i feel like if he ain't come from the grave if he ain't come here directly his ancestors are absolutely from the south <laughs> oh yeah he got his cousins down here we probably can to mike cool he, look he come back for the uh, for the bike class he come back for the sps might be the hey. first one <laughs> for the uh for the for the uh the um what what dances would Mike be doing? He would be doing the cha cha slide. He would be oh, doing. Oh, he definitely going to do the cha cha slide. He's definitely doing the cha cha slide. And he got to do the electric slide just for just re- for the respect level. He definitely you know can do the electric slide. You know, he he, he probably got a mean two step. Definitely got a mean. He he definitely knows. Some he probably Chicago, swing out all that. Swing out Chicago stepping. Hey, look, I, I I would love to see Mike somebody animate Mike doing Chicago stepping. Hey man, I, I went to a Chicago, Chicago swing out class. Man, that I only went to one. It was fun. It was fun. And as, as somebody who think he can dance, I felt like I had two left feet. I felt like I had four left feet. Wow. I was stepping all over the place. But uh, when I felt like I started to get it, I felt like I was uh, Chico Suave. <laughs> anyway, Mark. matter of fact, since since, the, since you are since you are bringing up the Chico Suave, have you seen the new X Men yet? See, si, Senor. Ah, now, uh, my young brother, how do you feel about that X Men ninety seven? You know what, Coop and I had a pretty, uh, pretty interesting conversation regarding it like I'll, I'll be honest I thought this was probably the weakest of the episodes that's come out thus far mm, okay but it wasn't weak like yeah. Coop, Coop and I were talking about it Coop was like bruh 
if this is the floor, if this is the bottom, we good. <laughs> Cause it's like, if if this was the bottom, and and I say that I don't know. Um, I guess because the the events in the last the first three episodes was so heavy. Yeah, we that this felt a little lighter, it, and it, so it wasn't. But it, it, I mean, it was of course it wasn't bad. It like was... man. A perfect nostalgia trip for very first of all. I'm gonna go on a rant. Shout out to Gif. Give her my rant, but I'm gonna go on a little bit in a minute. Mm -hmm. But what I want to say, and it's a good rant because it's wait, bruh, look, y'all for real. Y'all done heard us knock Disney and the MCU for a hot minute. It got me on a good rant that I'm about to give, but I just want to give another comment to the other the other dummy who was like the X Men, blah blah blah, boring, ain't got no stories. This is that. I'm like, bro, shit, I really want to, like, that sucker. if I ain't that never, same one. it wasn't the same, I don't think it was the same person, but it was oh. kind of close to the dread, it, in my mind, it might as well be the same sucker, but, uh, mm -hmm. if I could snatch somebody up, like how they do in the comic books, or whatever, it just, like, lift them up in my head and choke them out with one hand, not condoning violence, but if I could, like, mentally if choke them out. If I could use out. the telekinesis that... Jim, Jim Woo got yeah, the solo level. Yeah, if I can use I, it. I, the, man, I reached through the screen and, and slapped, slapped, the, slapped the light skin. I, I'm talking about you, Charles. I'm going to slap well, Charles. I go, well, Charles is being weird, too, about it. But enough about Charles. You know, his yeah, his his I podcast his podcast don't need us to promote it. But uh, <laughs> we ain't say the name of it. But I, I'm for, promoting violence in the name of <laughs> X-Men. But just for people who... Either you got to be, and I don't want to use age, but again, y'all, if you are not, like, we're 40, we're 40 plus here. So, we, we, and Mike watched this show when we were, like, I was, like, when it came on, we were, like, 10, 11, when it debuted, and it hit hard for a good five seasons. Well, the last season was a little, in, you know, where they cut corners, but it still was good. Um, I don't know what y'all want, y'all. If y'all ain't happy with this, then you ain't never gonna be happy. And sometimes, well, I mean, the world is full of unhappy people, right. and now they have the internet to kind of spew their unhappiness on others. I just want to say, like, you know, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna get on with it. They're gonna eventually stop making these things, or eventually, you might get too old and you think you can't like these things. I implore you to find some. Like, just because everybody like a thing, it might actually be good, y'all. It might actually be good. You ain't got to be contrary for the like of it. Bruh, and, and I say this because I ain't never really care about Jubilee. For them to make me like a Jubilee episode, that's something that the original series could never make me do. Like, she was the avatar for the kids, and she just kind of got in the way. I always liked the episodes of her in Colossus. Uh, when Colossus popped up, that was a dope episode. And the Juggernaut, can't forget that episode. I don't know why mm. Jubilee was out there almost about to get herself killed, you know. But at least this one, okay, like, all right, Jubilee has, as Mike say, has been working out and been training. Like, she jumped when she was attacking the, you know, she was stuck in the game with the Costa, you know, this game simulation with Mojo. First of all, I don't even like Mojo, but I feel like this hit at the right time. And I like Mojo saying metal stuff like, look, man, TV show is down. So you know what I'm going to do? We're going to make games. <laughs> like, Mojo, like, I thought that was funny. Like, like yeah, man, Mojo, is Mojo is like, we when you said Motendo, I was like, Motendo. I was like, oh, no. Like, how did I get there? Like, th this show is able in so many elements, able to slap in horror, nostalgia. Uh, yeah, you action. know what, bro? This one gave us like so many like they Easter shop, eggs genre with, breaking, with like man. Motendo and and the graphics from the video game. Y'all, I'm gonna say this. I like I don't really do Easter eggs. Look, shout out to like um, what's his name? Emergency, awesome, and heavy spoilers. See if you have watched it. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Then go watch one of their shows. They are great at every little Easter egg. You know, don't watch the. You don't have to watch the one that'd be like eighty three Easter eggs. They be they be overdoing it. But just watch like the fifteen minute ones that kind of go over the crest of the stuff that they pull from. They pull from so many 
games of like children of the atom from the x-men genesis game of course the arcade game mm -hmm. and put those in the super nintendo nes beat them up that if you let you add super nintendo wasn't that popular it wasn't as good as the arcade one because the arcade one never came to a home port even though it has come to home ports like not not in its current day but like for the xbox and the uh ps3 era i missed out buying it it got delisted i'm pissed so that brings me to my good rant disney why did y'all have this game relisted i know it takes a while to do listing i know licensing ain't easy but y'all own it now it ain't like he was like y'all had to get it from fox maybe this took a while i know animation take a while whoever is over in the license department i want the original game by the end of the season and I need y'all to holler at Daimu or wait for it yep. and go ahead and get that. We've been saying this. We said this on Yo, our once, episode about beat Once up. Uh, Streets of Rage drop and once Turtles drop, I was like, come on now. Come on. Come on, X-Men. Where y'all at? Like, bro, there's a bunch of independent ones that's been going. The beat em up rage is going great with all the modern type of look between River City Girls, Turtles, from Streets of Rage. Here's the thing, the great thing about X-Men. X-Men is a comic book. X-Men is a great arcade game. You can do either the pixelated style or you can do the X-Men is a dope fighting game. Well I'm saying you can do you can you can make that beat em up in the new like the style way forward likes to do with the uh hand drawing. You can probably do it in pol polygonal style if you want it, but probably not. But do the or you could do the digitized uh you know um poly um sprites and that game would rock right now tell me that game wouldn't break make an easy million bruh. million downloads by the end of the week if I'll they be dropped playing it. that joint right now bro i would have bought it if they would have came on and if they would have hit me with that after jubilee episode be like oh by the way game drops right now i find it i was like you got me yeah, you got me that, that would have been smart I'll oh just... also I do want to give a shout out to Chase Conley, the director, because it's a brother and he's dope. He's been doing it for a minute. So shout out to Chase Conley. Much love to you, young brother. Didn't he make some dope uh, uh memes a while ago? I think that was superhero memes that went went viral. Didn't he um, do the he, one he... with uh the, the waves for the goblin? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I know he redesigned the X-Men about a year, maybe two years ago. He redesigned the X-Men as like 90s anime care or 80s anime characters. And that was that was crazy. Dope. I gotta if you can find the link, send it to me. I want to look at it. And we'll Boy, share yeah. it if we can find it. But man, and just you know, you know, the Jubilee episode, I'm still ready for Sunspot to, to want to use his powers. I get it. He's going through it. You know, he got mommy issues and he don't want to be looked down upon his family. But bruh. When you about to die, use them powers. Your mommy ain't looking at you right now. I, I mean, mean when, when he when his boo was in danger, though, you know what I'm saying? He pulled I the mean, powers out. Especially, man, you gotta know Sunspot his is in his weakness. He has to he has to get in the sun. So it's like you can't hold back, you know, because you're gonna run out of juice eventually. Because you ain't get the sun in probably Mojo's world. So maybe that ain't necessarily a he got to get in and out of that world quickly, probably for him. But Jubilee's, you know, powers just work. And it, just to see where she could do with her powers, I was like, okay, Jubilee can make a, her and herself can make a giant Racine gun <laughs> and blow Mojo out the way. Like, man, Mojo got fat real quick. Like, dang, man, how do these ratings that good from the, from the thing? But you know what? It just makes sense that Mojo would come back. I know Twitch doesn't work in 97, but then again, it's Mojo. He's future based to be like a Twitch streamer promoter uh producer of all types of all media it just works like you can keep bringing mojo back mm -hmm. forever and um you know i i love what they're doing it, it it felt and it was a good break from taking a break from scott gene that was it was just so heavy the first three episodes i love it but man the store the storm and forge thing now I am going to say this uh, talking about Forge and Storm uh, Brother Forge come come sit down real quick let me talk to you real quick did you really think you was going to hook a goddess with some chili and a couple grand biscuits 
Huh? Is that what you thought was going to happen? No, bro. Uh-uh. You got to look. You got to do a little bit more work than that. I right? talk about honor, commitment, love, dedication. All right? You're going to have to show those things. And also, you can't be the person that kind of made the college for mutants as well. Nah, <laughs> bro. I was, I was like, you know what, Storm? I mean, I always rock with you, Storm, but this is why you the goddess. She like, hold up, playboy. You out here making weapons for our oppressors, and you think I'm on even remotely like you? What? Like you? It's like you, you. What she said? Her line was so wonderful. Like you, you try to fix a goddess but you made a fool out of me yeah like this won't bear shout out to the voice actor um allison silly i think is her name she man she ain't she ain't lost a step with her with her not at all you know she killing it so no she is she has not lost a step she's she's amazing honestly um but yeah yeah this that's pretty much it on that one i was just like yo the the romance was there on both accounts of course you know the whole forge thing fell through but then we got uh, a nice little tease for what's to come you know so i'm 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 hyped for the kind of storm ish now i guess plot that we got going on the side for what they say um we're gonna revisit they call it it was split into two it was motendo and life and death Life and Death will come back like they're going to do another anthology type of split where we'll jump back into her line like it's a comic book. You know, after so many days, and we'll see what's going on with Storm again. So they're going to go into Genosha next to find out what's going on Genosha, which is always some messed up stuff, you know, no matter what they say. So even though they're supposed to be supposed to be joining, you know, supposed to be joining the UN, but we'll see what really happens with that. I just wonder who's gonna attack next. Is it gonna be Sinister? Is is it gonna be the Friends of Humanity? Is it gonna be you know, is Trask and them gonna break out like they always seem to do, or they get other people to do their dirty work? Um, who else could be who else really hate the X Men that would fit in right now? Who I mean I guess it could hate be, the X Men. It could be anybody. Dang Avengers hate the X Men. <laughs> they be having to partner up with them every 10 years so that they can have like a a cross training program and they, yeah, put, they, you know, they kind of it well when it counts the the body side you know what i'm saying but it yeah they do they don't always agree nope and they'll be like look and scott be like take beast take beast and um wolverine with you for a little bit because we tired of them <laughs> like, cause they always the first. They like the only two is consistently an X. I mean, an Avenger somewhat. Who? What other X Men is consistently an Avenger? It's Wolverine. Uh, it's Wolverine, Wolverine is usually there. Beast, beast sometimes. I yeah, mean, I'm trying to think. I can't yo, think of anyone like, else off top right so, now. So, just in the comic world, a uh, Beast died this week. Oh, wow. Like the character Beast died and now did like he him- die in quote our time or did he die in the the House and Powers timeline? He 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 died in our time. He's like he's done. Oh, okay. How did he die? Because uh, I know he- you're still running the House and Powers timeline because that's on one of the timelines that Moira had died and come back in and all that stuff. How he long- has he had taken a dark turn oh, yeah, and that. had like and um so you know his one of his real good friends wonder man and he he had a weapon that was gonna blow up a large percentage of the human population um and his friend his best friend wonder man was like we gonna stop you man uh no matter what and he did something to set off the weapon and beast was like you fool you you don't understand you be sacrificed himself like his last act was sacrificing himself so that the bomb didn't blow up and kill wonder man so his why is it that the heroes are such better villains than the villains Mm. well i mean beast was an amazing villain because he's 
one of the smartest uh, people on the planet. And he, hey, and he kind of flipped. I feel like Beast just be self hating and he won't take it out on everybody. Mm. Mm. Well, I know we, Dang, I know we get late. Deep. Cool. <laughs> Bro, he I, always... know we wanna, I know we want to hit Invincible for real, for real. Yes. So I'll throw it, I'll throw it, uh, Coop. Um, what you got on that Invincible, man? You know, we, we here now. You know Again. what I'm saying? We got, we got Mark in there. We got Mark. He, he living his life. He trying, trying to save his mama. And look, all right. So, so y'all watch the finale. So everybody watch the finale. You watch. Oh, the that's finale. the finale, man. Yeah, that's the finale. Yeah, episode eight is the finale. Man, we can't have nothing in these streets. Hey, bro, that's why you got anime. That's why you got it. I that's haven't you seen it yet, but so, but y'all run it. I'm okay. I'm I'm about to transform transfer my mind into another space <laughs> and time. I love this episode. Um, I would say that this episode, like a lot of people say, it reminds us why we love Invincible and why we wish the break didn't happen and hope they don't never do a two year break or a breakage in between. If you gotta take one week break, I understand. Don't be taking no three months break within a season. That's yeah, it. and then and then when you come back, don't tell nobody that you're back. Like, but they you back. But they did just they drop just, an episode. But they kind of was like, "Hey, we back, y'all!" Like, and also, <laughs> don't drop your season in conjunction with a juggernaut like X Men is coming. Like, yeah, you doing good. You came back, but don't be don't don't get it twisted. X Men almost buried y'all. But I mean, look, X Men come out on Wednesday. Invincible on Thursday is cool for me. I'm just saying it's cool for us, but I'm saying as far as a media landscape, you didn't even see no buzz. X-Men had it sold up like Gary Payton was checking the scrub for mm. a good hot two weeks. Not, so, not checking the scrub, though. <laughs> Gary Payton in his prime had it sold up. So I'm just saying, we as podcasters and people who love this stuff, sure, it's no problem for us, but the idiots... Well, excuse me. I didn't mean to say that, but there are some idiots out there who, the way people, I don't know, analyze things and say this, it just didn't, it just was not the smartest thing to do. In fact, Amazon was the idiots because it's like, why are you doing this to your hot show? And I get it. If you had to take a break because writer's strike, other stuff delays, hopefully you don't have to do that ever again. Don't do it ever again. Try to get your production down to where this can release every year. No two year breaks at most a year and about three months. We get it. Stuff does happen. Animation is not easy. Like that is not to take away from that because it's an hour long animation. So that is that is hard. Um, but I loved it though. <laughs> but I loved it though. I loved everything that happened in this. I wish we would have got more Angstrom Levy. But shout out to Sterling K. Brown, man. You talk about acting. He did that, man. He did it. Like, we we joke about the voice acting for Mike, but you talk about a guy who could win an Oscar doing voices, and he touched every emotion. Sterling K. Brown can make, he can sound like the most sad and destitute, weak man on his last leg. Uh, he can sound very fearful and frightening. And he gave that all in his performance. What a character that I didn't read the books like talking about, but I know some, I read the watch some of the explainer videos, so I don't have that deep of a thing with Angstrom. Um, but in one episode, you felt the fear. You felt like this dude, like man, I know your mom. I know where you stay at. Yo, you, I don't even like you got a public identity in most of the universe. I'm gonna go to your house, bruh, and I'm going to torture your loved ones. So you can't ask more of a villain. To do what a, what that villain does in the hour, I mean, he made his life hell. First of all, we don't know how long he slapped him around in those parallel universes, because he even said one universe time moved different. As far as what Invincible experience, he might have been gone for months, hours, days, weeks. Yeah, it twisted his mind, and you know, I'm glad that what the result was like you know spoiler 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 first of all i didn't know langstrom made himself that angstrom made himself that strong but he wasn't strong enough but i love what invincible does with the human condition if you had that power would you have killed angstrom would you be able to hold back 
should you hold back? Should you feel the guilt of, of killing him? These are those questions that are palpable to making a good hero show that's mm-hmm. a little bit more mature. And to feel, to see Mark pick the choice that most sane people who have a good heart will feel like, I killed a man. I never wanted to kill him. But then you have Cecil kind of like his his other guy, the other voice in his head, like, at the end, hey, man, the bad guys are dead. The good guys are alive. That's a good day. Yeah. Cecil's not necessarily wrong. But then yeah, he's not this, wrong. But then to hear this from Cecil, ain't nothing good about Cecil. In my mind, Cecil but is a... In this particular case, because, I mean, it's like, of course, you know, you don't follow the person. You just, you know, pick, yeah. you know, if they say something good, you hold on to that. But and in this, this case, he's right. Like, yes, we don't want you to kill people. You don't want to kill people. But every now and then, there may be a threat that's just so big you that got you to. have to make that jump. And now, that should not be the go-to. Yes, I agree. Like, you know, oh boy, like, that's why I say about the boys, that they're not heroes, you know, Homelander don't have to prove nothing because Homelander was not, he's a test tube baby that wants to kill people and he's a brat. He ain't trying yeah. to be no hero. He's a fraud. He's a villainous fraud. You know, also, for any of you people that's trying to compare Homelander to being a hero or Superman, think stop it. Bro, he, is stop. The, he is a villain. He is a weirdo. He's a freak. He is a unloved abomination. He's not your friend. He's not what you should be looking up to. I don't care what politics you subscribe. That's how the writers are writing it. Grow up and learn something. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, anyone who's looking <laughs> up to <laughs> or sick to friend. him, just you don't want to be friends with him. With like him. you can like the character and be entertained, but if you're getting inspiration for him or the Joker, you know, you know, you types, mm. stop it. But anyway, I just want to throw that in there from like where you see the opposite and Invincible is trying to get inspiration, you know, and even Omni-Man, now he feels remorse. I ain't up with no redemption art like he's going to get redeemed. I get it. But bravo for him saying I did all of that, blah, blah, blah. I should die. Yeah. Those who are always on these redemption arcs for these terrible ma- this man had a massive murder spree to prove a point to prove how better he is than you he knows he did did this whole thing about like i did all of this and i don't know why but now i feel i feel sorry for these these people that are like you know that are that aren't as strong as i am it's like he was like he he just basically i guess made peace with it like i need to die for this yeah he's like i am no longer a viltrumite I renounce my nation. I am done with it. And I think I miss my wife. In my mind, I was joking. Like, which one, bro? But, uh, <laughs> which one? He talk about Debbie. He talk about little Debbie. Hey, you know. But the thing out. is, you can't spend that much time with someone pretending to love them and at least not a little bit love them. You know what I'm saying? That, I mean, think about it. They were with each other for years. What I mean, Mark is Mark is like eighteen or so when he left, and yeah. of course, he they didn't you know they he wasn't born the second he got to Earth. So let's talk about the years before they were the, before he was born and then after. Like yeah, all that time he does have real feelings for her, but also a, he was he's a Viltrumite who's raised in this whole like might makes right to a million percent. And it's amazing that he figured out how to integrate into it i think in the books the other viltrumites try to integrate and they can't quite do it but i guess he learned maybe he learned to want to be a writer maybe he always had it in him he's creative he's a creative Ooh. killer that's i think he's one of the most creative viltrumites when it comes to killing because that chop too that chop move boy he yeah. gets you with that chop be like you can't even get close to him but you know <laughs> but all said done uh, Yo, shout out to J.K. Simmons. Like the man don't miss with his voice acting either. Nah. And this is to think this is the guy who wants to get pictures of Spider Man. <laughs> you know, <It> just <laughs> <laughs> and he's just all it's just all in, bro. It's just ah, uh, it's like such a love. Invincible is such a modern day love letter to why we love superheroes. 
Yeah, because this but, is this story is incredible. The re- the only reason I'm mad about this being a finale is because I want more. Like, I, like I was just I don't know for some reason I was figuring we would get like ten or twelve episodes. Nah, so, I don't think we ever getting more than eight. I think maybe when we. But at the same time, they are hour long episodes. Yeah. So, but I mean, from from the the future team coming to get uh, Invincible to you know Eve saying, "Look, I love you," just straight outright saying it, like, "Yo, I love you," and you need to tell me, you know, basically like, "Look, you need to go ahead or get off the pot." Because well, I'm holding, I'm holding this candle for you, and you doing this kind of like one foot in, one foot out. Like I know you care about me, but you're not going to say it. Be fair though. He just realized he can't. He he still love Amber. He just realized he don't. He can't be with her. So yeah, I think it's a little unfair for her at that moment. But I get it. This is future her. She probably wants to feel better. Like yeah, I it's do. Twenty love years you. later, you know. You know, like. I'm shocked they still alive. I, I mean, I could see Eve still being alive, but I'm shocked the rest of them are <laughs> still there. Shout out to Bulletproof for making it alive, man. Good, good on you, bro. <laughs> you know, because I don't know how. Cause he's, yeah, because your powers be weren't all that, was they? I don't even know what Bulletproof powers are other than the general flight strength or whatever. I guess he's Bulletproof. So, yeah. you know, shout out to Luke Cage, you know. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I yeah, because I'm assuming the Viltrumites came in your time, right? So he made it. What happened? Y'all Somebody, made it, I guess. He made it. You know, I'll be good old Hill because I, I was shocked they ain't all dead. But because that superhero team, man, they be getting they butts toe up. And they I get trying, it. They be trying though. They be they trying. Be trying. You know, Rex doing his thing, fighting giant octopus man in the last episode, and he realized he can blow people away. Feel good for him. Rex is trying to change. I just love that the, they have character progression. Everybody, not like this is a show, y'all. The people who I hate mean, animation. Shoot, look at Debbie. Look at how Debbie stepped up in this episode. And I mean, Debbie's always been awesome. But when she said she recognized, she was like, You're mad because you found the one place where he's good and you're bad. And that set him off. That's the only thing. Boy. She was right, but it also set him off. I also look at it from H. to Levy's tour of mind, though. I'm not going to lie. It's like, looking at it from his side, is he wrong, though? I mean, he's wrong about how he's going about it, but if I had to... Well, he's, he knows he's wrong because he knows that this isn't... Actually, I go a, I go a step further, not, saying, not only saying that he knows he's wrong, but he's taking the soft way out. Why ain't you going after any of the super strong killer versions of Mark? Why are you coming after the Mark that's the loving, caring, you know, still uh, trying to help humanity? If you is, if you, because you know this isn't the Mark, you know it's not him. Well, you know, though, if anyone knows about dimensions or alternate realities and stuff, it's you. But I got so you question. know this one ain't that. Is this Angstrom from this reality and then the other ones from the other ones? Is he from this universe? Oh, yeah, because he is, he is, is experiencing all of their memories. At, at one time. So this is the good Angstrom who became bad because he tried to save Mark, but he just can't regulate it right now because I did like that. He's like, bro, you try to actually save me. You're good. Good is in you somewhere. But he just he's experiencing everything at once. Ha ha. Uh, you know, you know, he's everything whatever the day of that movie was, and he's just like he can't tell as smart as he is, he's warped. And his mind is cooked and he got too much mind on his mind. Hey, bruh, he he broke warped. Debbie's arm. She took that like a trooper, man. Look, Debbie, bruh. look. De- for for Debbie being just a regular human. Old Debbie. girl done took. Remember when Invisible got mad at her in the first season, and he had like he was going to do something. And she was like, "Does that make you feel strong?" Like she didn't get scared at all. She was like, "What? That make Shout you feel big?" I was like, "Yo, Debbie, Debbie don't, yo, Again. Debbie don't play." I love Debbie. Shout out to Sandra Oh, another another talented yep. actor, killing it with her delivery. All of like, these voice actors are killing it, man. Like, just these are actors who are doing voice work, and they are killing it. Like, bruh, if the money 
people like first of all you know what i know i don't know if mark is listening now but you know what we're gonna say uh when we talk about a certain person named charles famous podcaster <laughs> he's complaining about the animation it's so off it's not syncing up with what i'm hearing this and that bruh oh god of, your, por- of course it's not of close course it's your not. eyes and listen to those performances bruh first of all Ooh. First, I, 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 just, I oh, did dip in here. Mark is back. Let, let me say this because I, I have I have a bone to pick with that Jack Rabbit. First <laughs> off, the artistic director for the the animated joint is Corey Walker, the dude who designed Invincible for Robert Kirkman, who the the guy the first artist on Invincible is over the animation. So the character the characters look exactly as they were supposed to look. Yeah. Second, I I looked I I watched I was like this this animation is fine like their their mouths are moving it looks like they're actually saying the things they're saying I'm like so what is what is he looking at what do you want Charles he happens to be oh, a take big... take your tail to Tibet he's a big man people be, people be well, unhappy man yeah you trying to happy. Go. but where go are you gonna be happy but stop big, trashing I, we, we finally fed, get some but... quality animation in, West, in the west and, in the and west. you trashing it and at, the, and at the end of the day i think it's still a korean company that does it so they hey bruh the dude again shout out to heavy spoilers he talked with the guy who's like the showrunner for it, or one of the showrunners and they talked about the budget it was like look y'all like the guy said we know we made that joke about you know we adapted that joke in about this he's like we wanted to do that because do y'all want great detailed backgrounds and we got to decide what do we want to look good sometimes we want a background as an art piece to look good but when they just sit and talking y'all we gonna probably cut some corners you know the mouth may not move exact but he said when they fight though that's where the money is going so he's telling you well also people get mad at this show like every other animated show don't do this you have like, to do it. That thing be killing me. It's Burn. like, bro, come on. Stop it. It's like if you don't cut, and I ain't gonna say people like, oh, you can't cut corners, the old stuff. The economic, These y'all. be the same people that be wanting the cheapest and the, and the most deals and the most coupon cutting and the most coupon Burn. code using, but then everybody else supposed to use top dollar. I'm gonna just the say most this. expensive. Man, come on. Mike, Mark know this. It sounds like the dude who tried to harass me on a on one of my first events this year. He's talking about, man, I don't want the sales pitch. How can you tell me about the book? But I went off on him. That it made I embarrassed him in front of his old lady, you know. And she was like, Why are you just why are you I said I said, bro, you're gonna make me stand up to explain this to you. First of all, if I gotta explain stand up when I'm at the table, look, I ain't no I ain't no lightweight, y'all. I know how my sales pitch go when I can sit down and when I can stand. This brother came on the side of me and made me, and I still had to stand up to explain to him. Like, I ain't got the, like, bro, mm. I'm going to give you the sales pitch because the sales pitch is what you need. Yeah, because you like, don't take, know what, you don't know all of these books. I, like, bro, I'm not, like, if you, I said, bro, either you do or you don't. And I sold him Teflon Funk. I said, you know what you do? Take the book in your hand. Look at the back of it. Look in it. Observe it. <laughs> and I said, do you like 90s? Do you like hip hop? Do you like crime? Bam! Do you like crime? <laughs> like, do you like a crime story? <laughs> so I don't know what else you can make to do to make some people happy. Now he did wind up buying it because he felt embarrassed. He was a little drunk. Shout out to him. Good old embarrassment and shame <laughs> to put money in my pocket. Shame, but, shame. You know, but like, when I gotta, if I gotta be bothered with you that much, sometimes I don't even want you to come back. Like, I love money. Like, I shamelessly will tell you. But if I, if you expect that each time. Don't come back. Yeah, man. You Unless you go come back and that. just simply like, all right, I trust you, bro. You got good curation skills. Or if you want to say my curation sucks, but it don't take you long to make a damn decision. How about that? So it's either you like this or you don't, people. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what you expect or think you're going to get. There's only mm. so many big companies in the West that are investing in animation. It's still looked down upon here even though we got all these people who win in Emmys and Grammys voicing it for y'all silly behinds. Yeah, Man, just be how- for real. Like the hottest <laughs> animation right now is like doing the same things that people are trying to complain about Invincible on. Like, y'all, if you hate English that much, 
then go watch all the dubs that you want and leave other people alone. But if you think everything is going to be in some other foreign language, this ain't a foreign language. Well, the funny, the funny thing is, they hate English dubs, right? But that be the only language they speak. Thank you. <laughs> Look, on the, and I say this again. I was just shout out to my homie, um, um, Brian. He used to be of a certain podcast. Uh, he's no longer part of that, so I'm not going to mention that in the podcast. But we was just talking. He's like, I'm not really big in anime. He said, but the thing that keep that kind of, he said, I hate these gatekeepers when it comes to anime when I want might want to get into it. It's like, you know, they'd be like, well, you don't watch stuff in dub and you watch the dub and this thing. He said, because I like dub. And our man, our friend, homie, be a little, as he like to say, elevated. He might not have time to read. Some people ain't got time to read sometimes, y'all. Like, the people y'all don't respect. No, how us about watch- this? Don't make an excuse. I don't watch it because I don't want to. The exactly. end. You have I don't. I don't need to make a. I don't need to give you a caveat. I don't want to. And the I don't speak Japanese, so I'm not gonna listen to Japanese. And then, so my brain has to receive and process a language that it doesn't understand, mm-hmm. as well as me reading, as well as me also trying to see the action that's going on screen. Why? So that I can. I don't know get some kind of championship belt for sub watching that no one cares about it is to watch ninja comedy and dub i am so happy it's simultaneously dub y'all my i'm so that's why i've enjoyed it some more and look i watch sub because i want to be like if it's a story i love i want to keep up with it that's the only reason why i've learned to watch sub because of time aspects because we like to bring this wonderful show to you all and be up on the podcast but you know, some of y'all don't care about us podcasters. Y'all don't, y'all just be like, I know everything, blah, blah, blah. So, but I'm up here telling you as a sub watcher, I might listen to stuff in dub if it's done simultaneously. Guess what I'm probably going to pick? And it just depends on the show and the setting of it or whatever. I would have kept with Spy Family if it was dubbed at the same time. I have learned to love it in dub, in a sub, but I did start watching it in dub. Yeah, I started watching it in dub. And when I caught up and Sub was coming out, I watched one episode. I watched like like a minute in Sub, and I was like, nah, this ain't for me. I've I've learned to love it in Sub. I was like, I need my voices of, back. You know, but in the movie, guess what Guess what? I might go watch the movie in. Now, if, I don't know if Mark going to come with me because he don't really care about... I don't think he cared too much about... Uh, what's his name? Twilight. <laughs> he, like, he like everybody else but Twilight. <laughs> I think his voice acting in Japanese makes it more interesting, but I like Anya in either version. But I have to say, uh, what's her name? Your in English is actually way more. I think her English voice is way better as for the character, but it works both ways for me. So, y'all, I'm sub a dub fluid. Haha, I brought that back. It don't matter to me. Bring it all if it's good. It works. I can I can learn to adapt and let people enjoy things. I don't have to insult them for talking about you like this this slop and all but this. Remember, like, you're cool like, if you can insult people and 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 say that things that people like are bad. It, you're cool for that. But those be the same people that'll never call out any of the folks who be up there with the isms in these groups. Mm. That's that's what kill me. If you're gonna you use your hate and your anger powers to call out the the evil people. Shout out to Viral Hit. That's why I'm going to love Viral Hit. The tagline is calling out pretentious pieces of ish. <laughs> Online. I love, like, you, you, like, when you fight up for, when you, when you punch up, punch up, people, you know, you keep punching down. You're la- you know, you're lazy. People talking about the right. And if one dude was like, the writing on X Men is lazy, blah, blah, blah. People got all here. Of course like, it is. Like, bruh. Like, all right. Of course it is. Like, just. If you can't really appreciate X Men '97, Invincible, you ain't gotta love it like we love it. But I think you generally like some people who hate on it. But you stay watching it. If you stay watching something to the end, how much do you hate it? I ain't watch all them Star Wars stuff. No, I like if there's something I don't like, I don't watch. It. I, I, I could, you know what? That's a that's a good place to that's a good place to wrap look, it. I don't even know what's going on on Dead Unluck no more. Me neither. <laughs> I, I, I gave up. So I'm gonna throw it to Coop. Coop, 
where can people find you? Because we've been doing <sighs> final thoughts for a minute anyway. I'm sorry, y'all. My bad. Final thoughts, you can find me at blurred period ish on IG. Eventually, my custom website will be back. Uh, but of course, you can find the Blurred Podcast on Spotify, TuneIn, Apple, uh, other places. You will find me in Mobile, uh, well, Daphne to be exact. The Mobile Bay Anime Fest. Shout out to them. They just did a vendor spotlight on me. Uh, Ooh. You know, I'm, I'm up in the marquee with it in the, in the scroll. Uh, so we'll be seeing some of our homies uh, that we always see on the Gulf Coast. Um, shout out to Red Top Cosplay if you're listening. Shout out to you, homie. We're going to see you again. Um, you know, he's a podcaster. He's taking a little bit of break, but he's coming back. Might be back with our homie Brian on something. Y'all will know they might wind up popping up on the next season of Blurtish. You know, we always start our new season in June. We we don't take breaks, per se, but expect to see them in the next uh, Blurtish year, I would say, one way or the other. You know, we're definitely going to uh, keep in touch with those gentlemen. Um, so you'll see me there. And the next day after the Mobile Bay Anime Fest, I will be at the Hancock County uh, Fest. And shout out to Mike. I love your edit. He just dropped one video. Uh, you know, we catching up on some videos from last year, but he dropped the St. Tammany Collectors Con. I shared it with some folks local. I'm going to share it around to some more local spaces in the New Orleans area. Different that. So y'all get to see if you are around Louisiana, South Louisiana. And if you were one of the vendors, uh, and oh, and uh, James Ristic Reese, they thought that was dope. He appreciated it, so I gave it to him. So man, we out here trying to do the good thing. So stay tuned to Nerd Soul to watch the rest of the videos of Coop Goes the Cons. That's what I call <laughs> it on my website when I have my website back. But you know, you will see me at different cons. I can't wait to see the one of us, me and Mark, at uh, Fan Expo. And you're gonna see us fanboying out when we listening to Megatron and Starscream. We, cause mm, we just, okay. we, just go, ah! we can't wait for that episode. We can't wait. But I know. Nice, nice. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. But anyway, go on, uh, go on and uh, drop that website one more time even though, you know, even though they, they working on it. You know what I'm saying? Guys, look. It's go to the site. Blurtish period uh ish.com it may not work um the new site might be www.blurred uh hyphen ish.net so it might be a .net change to it bookmark it keep it in mind we coming back it's under development you know when you ain't a big company i've been happens. under development for a minute so, <laughs> so I, I, I went from plan maintenance upgrade under development so you might see the site come back and then you might see a redesign right after that what up what up all right well uh let me see the final thoughts basically we've been we've been rapping about it anyway look we got a lot of dope stuff coming next week we will be talking about preview stuff of course demon slayer is coming back my hero is coming back that's all you need but anyway <laughs> anyway, NDRD, S O U L, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, podcast, all that jazz. Until the next time that you see something that you be like, why is this person tripping? Just let it go. Just let it slide. Don't, let them hate on their own. Look, don't be mm-hmm. like me. I actually analyze this to let y'all know when they messing up. Avoid let, it. Let them hate on their own. Leave them haters to themselves. <laughs> preview right. next week. I'm giving the preview list next week. Word. For us to you, we're just saying peace.